Listen, vision. 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 DC's number one recording studio. Oh. Thursday night team. Thursday night team. Thursday night team. It's Thursday night team with Anthony. Thursday night team. Thursday night team. Thursday night team. It's Thursday night team with Anthony. Thursday night team with Anthony. New sports, truth with comedy, community mixed with a little celebrity. Every Thursday night at six in the evening. Thursday night team. Thursday night team. Thursday night team. With Anthony Thursday night tea Thursday night tea Thursday night tea It's Thursday night tea With Anthony Thursday night tea Thursday night tea Thursday night tea It's Thursday night tea With Anthony Thursday night tea Thursday night tea Thursday night tea Thursday night tea with Anthony. Yeah, 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 yeah. And here we go. I feel like Oprah when I do that. Yeah! You get a show, you get a show, you get a show. Everybody except Monique. Welcome to Thursday night tea with Anthony. <laughs> Thank you guys for tuning in. We are here at Listen Vision Studios live and direct in the capital of Washington, D.C. It's hot. It's cold. We don't know what the weather is. I came out with a poncho, a sweater, a raincoat, rain boots, church shoes. I just didn't know. <laughs> we have an amazing show for you today. We have the comedy show producers, some of the livest, some of the funniest, some of the most fair bookers uh, in the city. We have Oral Henry in the house today. Give it up for Oral Henry. just walked in, it's John Yeager! <laughs> so, we're gonna go pay these bills to this Lock Love commercial right quick, and we're gonna come back with more Thursday Night Tea with Anthony! Welcome to Lock Love Salon. We're located at 402 8th Street, Northeast Washington, D.C., right in the heart of the capital. Come in, let me introduce you. Welcome to Lock Love Salon. We here at Lock Love are an award-winning natural hair care salon that focuses on natural hair care and lock artistry. We believe in the inherent beauty of natural hair and take a more of an educational, holistic approach to natural hair to preserve hair quality and assure healthy growth. We have an in-salon marketplace stocked to the core full of essential products to promote healthy hair, which we also use ourselves. All of our stylists are well versed in all things natural hair care. Locks, extensions, flat twist updos, kid styles. We are here to promote your best you. Come to Lock Love so you can be locked in love and we'll see you beyond the red door. And we're back. We are back. Thank you for tuning in to Thursday Night Tea with Anthony. Thank you, Janice Smith, for tuning in. Beverly Smith-Brown, always a supporter. We appreciate you. Uh, here's my co-host, Michelle Sometimes. Give it up for Michelle. You know you're a show favorite. We love to have you here on the Thank show. You. And we sh share the same birthday. Sagittarius That's right. in Sagittarius. the house. Sagittarius. Sagittarius in the house. We are free and live. Aren't we all the time? Mm -hmm. And lit. So <laughs> uh, we have an amazing show for you today. And we're not going yeah. to run out of time. We're going to get to these topics, knock them out the way, because I want all of the producers to be able to share their stories and yep. to do their, um, do their set. So we're going to hop right into these topics. First and foremost, um, we are praising um, and giving accolades to um, our 
one of our saviors, uh, to be quite frankly, uh, Martin Luther King Jr. Yes. We are celebrating, this is the anniversary of his um, assassination. We're not clapping for the assassination, but we're clapping for MLK. Yeah. Yeah, we're clapping yes. for MLK, yes. Um, that's crazy. But yes, it marks his, uh, the anniversary of his death. And it's yeah. so, um, it's so timely or untimely, you know, depending on how you want to spin it, um, because we uh, have another death, another senseless, senseless death, yep. gun violence. Everything in the news is gun, 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 yet they don't want to yep. say that we have a gun problem. It's crazy. So Saheed uh, Vassell uh, yep. was just gunned down. He was, in a matter of weeks, just last week, another black guy was gunned down for, they said that they thought that he had a gun when he, right. in actuality, he didn't. No. What do you guys think about the Second Amendment? Do you think it should be amended? I mean. Tough question, right? right oh, just the to, right off the back. <laughs> yeah. But I think it was with Saheed, though. I mean, well, he was shot by the police, right? Yes, 10 so they, times. <laughs> yeah, and they said he thought, they thought he had something in his hand. It was just a pipe. Yes. Um, And so... So there needs to be a couple of things. I do think like that is either these cops are racist, okay, or they're really under trained. Yes. So something needs to happen, and it can't just keep being. Oh, I thought he had. I thought he had, but something needs to happen because they keep these men keep dying, and they just happen to be a whole bunch of black men who keep dying. Where are the tasers? Um, like, 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 I mean, can what's we the tase? first step? I mean, there's Goodness. so many. There's so many steps prior to. And I don't know why we go to the gun first. Uh, it's, it's I think ridiculous. they're afraid. They're just they're not trained properly, and they are scared themselves. Yeah, a lot of their training. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yes. A lot of their training is very inept for what they're doing. Yes. And they uh, wind up being far too aggressive to begin with. Yes. That combined with closet racists. Yes. Uh, and uh, immature tactics in conflict resolution. Very much so. Really give them a hard, uh, hard, hard time. You're going to have a hard time coming back into the people's graces, if they ever were, because they come from racist roots. Yes. So let's not put around that. Yes. It's shameful, and a lot of benevolent people have entered the force and are working very hard to cross bridges of all kinds of different intersectionalities. What is the and psych evaluation like? <laughs> like? I mean, like, what is that? What is that like? There's not a lot of it. I mean, I remember my ex-husband <clears throat> um, tried to get on the police force. They did a credit check. But they didn't do... <laughs> yes, check your they, credit. <laughs> but they did not do a psych evaluation. Um, so he got denied because he had bad credit. And they were just going to feel like he was going to skim drug money. So he didn't get a job because of that. But there was no other kind of evaluation oh, wait a minute. that was I'm, done. I'm sorry. Sidebar right quick. Did you say he got denied because he had bad credit? So yes. he couldn't be on the force? You couldn't be on the force if you have bad no, credit. No, that can't. is crazy. Yeah. My um, my birth father was a decorate, presidentially decorated cop before he passed away. Uh, I didn't get to know him, but I got to know the stories. And he walked a beat. He never made an arrest. He never issued a ticket. Crime went down in that neighborhood, and he was hauled before his peers for a corruption trial. That's crazy. Yeah. That's crazy. So, Anybody you know, else? <laughs> who, I mean, who? Anybody else in chime in Second Amendment? No guns? Uh, tired of them? I'm ex-military. Okay, all right, no problem. Look at that. <laughs> nah, uh, <laughs> Look at that. It's a sad, me personally, it's a sad situation. I don't know if the, I saw some pictures online, if that was him holding what he, that little pipe he had. Uh -huh. Me, I would have probably thought it was a gun too. It yes, that's another thing that nobody's addressing. It, it, it definitely looked like a gun. And his stance. Yeah, his stance it, so was like. If, if I was the other person, I would have probably felt threatened too. But you won't be it was aggressive. super skinny. You won't be aggressive. That's exactly right. So you can have any kind of angular object. I mean, there's so many things you have to do first. And they're both, both of the people this this week and last week, they were both mentally disabled. Yeah. Uh, so it's like you can't tell a mentally disabled person, oh, don't act like you have a gun because, I mean, you right. know, don't they're going to do it that it. way or don't. Exactly. I think um, that if you're going to let people carry guns, uh, like people drive cars, there need to be tests. There need Definitely. to be, you know, checkups on their safety knowledge, et cetera. It's harder to get Sudafed. Like, <laughs> it sure is. I mean, you can make meth before you, you know what I'm saying, get a gun. It's crazy. <laughs> it's crazy. We're going to keep keep it going. Um, 
we have comedians here. Oh, thanks, Quentin, for tuning in. Mike, Carolina born and raised. We appreciate you guys <laughs> tuning in. Um, com comedians, Dave Chappelle. Oh my God. The guy I that in 2015, someone threw a banana at Dave Chappelle yep. on stage, uh, and he they pressed charges. It was like battery and something, something, orderly conduct or something like that. Right. They uh, charged the guy, but Dave Chappelle wouldn't take it to court because he was like, I just don't right. want to address it, blah, blah, blah. Then, now the guy has pressed charges against Dave Chappelle, <laughs> saying that his security <laughs> roughed him up and hit him twice while he was being subdued. Um... <laughs> Chime in. First of all, what do we Microphone. <laughs> okay, I've met Dave Chappelle, and I've met Dave Chappelle's security, so seeing them beat people up is very difficult to believe. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Derek? What did he expect to happen? Right. After you throw a banana at After a security... After you throw a banana at somebody who's performing, <laughs> like, what did you... Somebody, if I was sitting beside him, I probably would have stole him. Like, uh, yeah, I probably right. just would have, like... <laughs> Would have been like, paid, oh, excuse me. I done paid like 180 probably for this <laughs> Okay, I you're ruining the show. The show. Hey, you about mm -hmm. to get this work. Yeah, it's awful. And the fact that he didn't participate in the, Dave didn't participate in the, you know, in the in the case, like to let it go away. Exactly. I mean, people are about money, and that's what they're about. So if I can't get my attention one way, I'm going to get it the other. Oral? Me, personally, I would have been pissed off. I was Dave because I hate bananas. <laughs> <laughs> and it would have went down. It would have went down then. I'm just letting you know. I don't like bananas. They have so much potassium, though. <laughs> they make your nails strong. You are all right. Okay. You, you are all right, but nah, I'm an apple guy. Oh, right. and an apple a day keeps the doctor away. That's true. That's how you eat apple. John? So, so uh, you, guys, you guys are telling me. Sorry, I'm uh, presenting to be Norm McDonald on a panel. Oh, uh, good, weren't you? Funny, because I uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, threw a banana, you know, but uh, you know, uh, dropped the charges, but on a second appeal. You know what? <laughs> you know what? That was good. Thank you. On to the next one. Black China. Oh, poor baby. Oh, poor baby. She just can't get a break. She can't. Sure she... Gosh. Sure I don't know. Li if you her. stop mentioning her name out loud, she goes away. Does she? <laughs> what if you what mention she it done? three times? What has she done? I like Black China. <laughs> and Black China yes, lost really. this contract because she was turning up at the uh, Six Flags. <laughs> And got into a fight, but I can't. But the thing is, something somebody was saying stuff and doing stuff to her, and I feel like she reacted. Well, the lady touched her child. You know what See? I'm saying? So no, 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 no. About that. Michelle, no, we we not gonna do that. No, no, listen, no, no. listen. What? Don't listen. condone what? No, no, no. I, you could be mad. You can't be. You can't in, uh, put your hands on people. No, you can't endorse strollers. And then try to use the stroller to hit somebody. I mean, hey, you have like, a point. You this, have you this have this a point. What, this is not what our strollers are made for. But you they knew who Black that. China was in the beginning. It wasn't like she was some upstanding person. But guess She's what, though? Guess what? The the Black company China. dropped her um, her endorsement. This, she I've lost the endorsement. Yep. And then the rival company are in talks with good, the, good, with good. because signing some, her because the rival company. They strollers are made to hit people. Yes. <laughs> yeah. they, they said that it applies to the sturdiness of the stroller. So they're going to book yeah. her. The little wagon thing? The, yeah. Yeah, the, the one wagon. in the fit. In the I know the song. You know the song with her. Uh, what is it? God, what is, is it? it? Uh, what is it? Uh, Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj. little red wagon. That, is that No. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah. We don't know. We don't follow <laughs> Black China. <laughs> Yeah. yeah so I thought you liked Black Jack. I'm just shocked. I'm shocked that someone I, with the yeah. uh, Kardashians I, PR I, team. I follow her <laughs> antics because I feel like I was like she did the right thing when well, she, about, uh, about um, <laughs> you know, <laughs> took all of her stuff out of Rob's house and everything. I was like, you go get your coin, young lady. She knows how the game is played, so I, I root yeah, for her. I root for her for the for her endorsement. Not those details, because she's not gonna get it through those <laughs> sex tapes. That tape was horrible. She oh my god, you're the worst. <laughs> that tape was so bad it felt it made me feel better about my sex. Oh you know, yes, like, she was, was just so. So not into Everybody it. should feel she was so lackluster. She like, was. It's that like was if a, you don't want to do it, don't just do it. Don't do it and don't record it. And definitely don't record no. it. You know okay. what they should have done is they should have done the whole like pixelation. They should have squiggled the entire video. <laughs> like it was from China, you know? Like that would It would have made her look more exciting. Blacked out China. It'd be yeah. great. Uh, yeah. You know, 
No, we would have seen if the weave wasn't going back and forth. She wasn't doing nothing. <laughs> Yo, finally, uh, Rudy, not finally, but uh, at our last topic, Rudy Giuliani gets a divorce. Aww. His wife is uh, divorcing him. She's fed up. I think we have a picture of him and uh, his wife. And Do if we? we? Was this the one who was married to the black woman? No. No, Rudy Giuliani. But I think this is, if we can zoom in to his mouth. His okay. Yo, could you imagine? <laughs> his this is what she's tired of. And I think she listed it in the divorce because she just could oh, not. Y'all are wrong. Y'all are wrong. Kissing that mouth anymore. Like, he's going to bite her whole head off. It happens. It's a receding gum situation. Ooh. Yo. You see his overbite? That's crazy. Yo, she already looked like she ain't got no lips. I wanted to he bite those off. He was extremely happy. <laughs> or like, was it just the teeth? He did, but that's what that's the name of the dentures that he he purchased, the happy dentures. So he was like, oh, I want number four, the happy ones. So he's always happy. Lord. I don't know. He got your name by like he's ready to bite somebody. I ain't going <laughs> to go with you up. And we don't condone biting. So we don't. we're going we're going you to <laughs> With well, consenting depends, adults. Unless you're Spine. black China. We don't want to see you biting anybody because it'll be more like a nibble. So um, we're going to go to break, pay these bills, and come right back with our roundtable discussion with our comedy producer. <laughs> oh, my God. It's like I woke up and I was a comedian. And then it was like I had my own show. It's crazy. Thursday night tea, 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 Thursday, Thursday, Versatile, sir. And there you go. I, I would have loved to see you in the booth. I'm Yo, like, let me, let so me, let it me, was me, me and my homeboy Orlando, one of my best friends. Shout out to Orlando Harper who helped me with the with both songs. Um, yeah, he's a singer. He's located here in D.C. So shout out to Orlando. It was a great interest. Shout out to Steven, who's in our studio audience. Give Steven a round of applause. Steven. <laughs> Shout out to Debbie Simmons. Uh, she's a travel agent. Thank you for tuning in, Debbie. Um, hey, hopefully, Debbie. I'll be using you um, later in the summer. Th Shout out to Kellen Rowe, who is always watching. We appreciate all of our viewers who tune in. We also pr appreciate all of our sponsors. Thank you. Shout out to Lock Love and Comfort Zone. We love you and thank you. So, um, today, 
I, um, just a little backstory. I've been doing comedy for about three years. Uh, oh. I started out uh, at um, ILC um, in Laughing Color with Chelsea Short. It was a workshop. Yeah. Um, it's so crazy how I even got to um, to do that, and I don't even want to get into that story because it's long. But did the workshop. It was an amazing <laughs> workshop. They taught you how to formulate your set, you yeah. know, how to write, and you know your stage presence and all of that. It was amazing. It was an amazing workshop. So shout out to um, to um, Charity, and I mean Chelsea, Chelsea Short. Yeah, shout out to Chelsea. So after that though. They did not prepare you for what <laughs> what happens after that. It was just like, the oh, grind. yeah, we did the showcase. It was amazing. And then it was like, yeah, you're Good great. Luck. Thank you. Um, so I pretty much had to just go beat the streets, you know what I'm saying, and try to find out, you know, where to go. And I went to open mics, you know, just like, you know, everybody does, um, and sat there and waited for hours for me to, you know, to finally go to get bumped <laughs> by everybody who was more um, more known or friends with the booker or exactly. friends with the person that run the room, in which I don't have an issue with that because you have to pay your dues, you know what I'm saying? You just got on board, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. That's how the game is made. So you learn the rules and you play by the rules. Um, so with that being said, I never knew how to approach people to get booked. What are people looking for when you book? And people talk about this all the time, but they never do it to the bookers. You know what I'm saying? It's always like a sidebar conversation. Right. Like, damn, they won't book me. I feel like they're trying to be funny. Y'all, and you know who you are. I feel as though. You know who you are. I feel as though I need to be booked. Yeah, they not booking me, but they book such and such all the time. They not even funny. You know, I've heard that a quadrillion times. Bookers, what are you looking for? I mean, I think that first and foremost, if you are you're booking, you've produced the show. So like this, this is the producer show, yes. right? So you have a show that, and you want it to reflect. I mean, the reason I started shows was really to meet comedians so I can get out, get on, to any or get booked. So you want the people who come to you, or you want the people who are going to do your show to be a reflection of who you are. True. And so sometimes it's not about being funny. Sometimes it's about, oh, this person is funny, or this person is funny in this situation, but I know the people who are following me, and I need this kind of funny, or I need um, this kind of person to be able to make the show. Understandable. For my, for my, for, for my, the shows that I do, because mine are interactive, and mine are not just straight stand-up comedy. comedy. Yeah. Yes. For me, it's Microphone. Microphone, sir. I don't need the microphone. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> be putting, hold on, let's get this out of the way. You ain't gonna be putting no mic in my face. <laughs> but nah, like when we when we do a show, uh, look for a show. We try to make sure that everybody's on the show gives a different element to the show. Like we don't want the same comic coming up after comic, cause then it's gonna get boring. We want everybody to be different in their own lane which give us a whole variety of a whole double show. You know what I'm saying? It's like somebody new coming on every time they come up. You know? so Understandable. Yeah. Anybody else? Uh, not me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, no, be honest with you, though, it all depends on what type of show you're booking. Uh, like you say, Michelle, she has an inter- – I've been to her show, I think, twice. It's a real good show. It, it's everything in that show. They, they they giving out prizes, doing <laughs> telling the donkey. It's like a whole lot going on over there. Yes. So you got to be ready. You can't just be a, a dry comic. You got to actually interact, have a little flavor. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes it depends on if you have a you booking a show. If you have a budget, you could book a different type of comics. But if you if everything comes out your own pocket, you want a comic who a mixture of funny and have a slight following. Uh, because me personally, because nothing wrong with all everybody up here. Took losses. When you book show, you don't take a loss or two. <coughs> we don't like taking losses. That's what we don't like. I don't take losses. <laughs> hey, hey, and, and that's great. You know, if you don't take losses, hey, more power to you. But sometimes only we, because we I don't, losses. I don't take as many risks as uh, as as people. I now, should. They, I want to. I got to learn they, from that. They, I got to learn from that. But I can't. I can't. I do not have. I got two children that want to eat regularly. I cannot. I cannot. <laughs> so I. What I'll do is I will. And I. But on the other hand. 
I don't make anyone have a following. As a producer, it is my job to put butts in the seats. And so if I don't, right. I don't. Right. That's a big right. question, though. Like, right. people, it's a dichotomy. People want, like Oral said, people want people with following so that they can put um, butts in the seat. I think it just kind of depends on the type of show. Right. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah. Um, being that I'm coming out of West Virginia, uh, the, the way, Woo! yes, yes, indeed, West Virginia, Wild West Virginia. And wonderful. The, yes. Oh, I don't go there. <laughs> Ain't nothing wonderful about it. Wow. Yes. Um, I, I I book comedians according to the venue. I go according. You know. You know what is there? Is there more black crowd? More white crowd? What what kind of crowd? You know. I don't try to bring too many African Americans to a whole a white bar in West Virginia. But why so, is that though? Why um, that? typically because West Virginia does still does have, have reputation. Yeah. You know, the yeah. the there's, still, there's still a right, reputation. Right. It's yeah. still a reputation. I do, I do put maybe one or two, but majority, if it's a, if it's a white bar, I bring more white comics than black comics. Really? You know? I do, I do. I but feel- but with me, but with me, it's not about who's been, who's who's done comedy the most or whatever. If you come at me and say I want to do a show, then you want to show. Yeah. I'm, and I'm, I'm like that. I'm he always nice. open door. So he I've nice. Been, I've been, <laughs> you know, I've had those, um, you know, just through experience. You kind of when you see a crowd, you start. I don't. Well, I know that I can only speak for myself. Sometimes I start to question my set. Like, mm-hmm. are they gonna get into this set? Right. Uh, I did that at to first. Now I've realized that if you're funny, you're, you're funny. funny. Right. And mm-hmm. I think that, um, well, I myself that I transcend the color line. I can be funny to white people and black people. Yep. So I wouldn't want anybody to, you know, not book me or book me just because based on, or just like, you know, everybody knows that I'm gay. But when I first came out, I didn't want to be known as the gay comedian. Wait, what? I didn't do, I didn't talk about sexuality. I didn't talk about sexuality for two oh, years. Oh, you gay? You know Yo. what? You know what? I know. <laughs> Kevin, you no, know about this? You, true story. I hit up, I told Derek Skip and Oral Henry, I said, look, y'all ain't got no gay comedians on y'all show. Y'all need to no. book me. And then they booked me and put me on a show and I came and I killed. That's but right. it wasn't because I was gay. That's just, you know, my yeah, orientation. I, I was like, you gay? <laughs> <laughs> I inboxed back. I was like, you gay for real? <laughs> He, he, when we first met, we never he never talked that much. He was like head nodder, you know, he was just in the back. And now he's like Thursday night. Yeah, now it's like Thursday night. <laughs> and then, like, he just, he, like, he just came up like, oh, yes. Yes. I'm still not convinced, like, though. Still, I but I didn't yeah. want to be typecasted. You know what I mean? Right, I didn't right. want to be yeah. stereotyped. Hey, did your room. Yeah, I know. But yeah, at the yeah, that yeah. was woo, that was a tough I room. There, I was like, okay, what's the I said, oh wait a minute. Wait. <laughs> okay it's tough up, it's tough but I don't I, think with the race thing I think that it's not about race per se it's about the kind of comedy that people like because I used to say that too I'm like oh and I'm not going to do I'm not going to do black rooms because white people love me but black people be mm. But it's not really about black people, white people, because the the shows that I produce, I mean, it's Bear about Bear is, people. is collectively, a, if you would say, a white bar. It's a white bar. But when I do my show, it's black women in there, or it's okay. black men, women or black men, and then some white folks too, because they know they know Michelle sometimes. Uh, but I feel like most most of the people who who will come to a show know Brainy Girl Productions, and we know that Brainy Girls is Brainy is code for black. Right. So, um, so. So it's not really about that, because so because I can't say that I'm not good with black audiences because my audience is, is either uh, it's either black women or, or white women usually, but there are certain rooms that I still can't, I still have difficulty, and it's not and it's and that might be the same as race. Like I'll go to, I'll go to I don't know that Joe Claire show, mm, okay. bombed terribly. There were boos that were heard, and it was terrible. <laughs> There's, they do. <laughs> Joe Claire does an open mic on show. On Thursdays, right? Uh, yeah, he does an open mic show. Go on down there. You might sign up or whatever. And I wasn't one of the sign up. I was like one of the books. I got 50 bucks to get booed. So I'm like, this is what it is. But it's, it's, so I don't think it's about, I think it's about the kind of person. I don't, I don't think you can just do that based on race. Right. But I like to have a right. mix up anyway. And yeah. I have mix, a mixed uh, lineup anyway. Because, um, like you said, it makes it more interesting. And if there is a black woman for me who wants to get a chance or wants to get put on, mm-hmm. and I haven't heard too much, I'll always give a black woman a chance. Yeah, Amen. I can. I, yeah, yeah. I can say I can say this as a overweight white man with a beard. 
John, you're overweight? <laughs> what? <something. laughs> no way. <laughs> it's actually, it's it's actually just gay. It's just gay. It's not a... Uh, uh, but uh, no, it's someone who is like the the walking, talking stereotype of comedy, like the slightly slightly uncoordinated... Uh, okay, I'm being mean to myself. But uh, <laughs> like I like to see... Di- you have to have different types of comedy. And that's the one yep. thing is if you have a show of seven people doing the same bit about like, hey, what's the deal with the Metro? It's just right. like, oh my God, <laughs> so tired of this. Um, and also you learn about the audience and like that's one thing as a yeah. producer I think everybody who, who runs shows you realize is that you have different pockets of humor within an audience like you're never going to have like yes. a set black crowd that only listens to black jokes like right. that doesn't exist does like not. there's white crowds that are like please like give me something else besides Abercrombie and Fitch onion <laughs> pretzels <laughs> <laughs> you know like pumpkin spice like give me something real you know like right. and uh, I think the trick is that but, but, but from a producer standpoint which obviously because we're we're here on this panel uh some of us has figured out how to do better than others is uh, is to take those little pockets and get them to tell their friends, and then you you kind of work with little like you know your little tendrils. You you hook them all in, and then you hit them with the Jewish lightning. That's what I call it. Yes, <laughs> Elizabeth. Uh, I look for comics that have a certain transcendence. I look for comics that aren't uh, in their shell of their set. Um, sometimes a set is wonderful and that set's really witty and well earned and I will take that comic and give them stage time and let them find their way out of the shell but like Michelle was saying who's way out of her shell or any shell that you could put her in except for maybe you know Aphrodite shell (laughs) a men and a women you know (laughs) oh my goddess Uh, you know (laughs) Every audience is different, so I I don't want the kid that's having therapy on my stage. The other thing that's really important to me is uh, substance abuse. Now, uh, I did 11 years uh, in L.A., and um, I spent a lot of time at the comedy store, and I, as a producer, need to know a lot about substance abuse um, for a number of reasons. So-and-so is a functioning comic, but so-and-so likes to toot. I need to watch that guy. I need to watch what he's drinking. I need to watch who's coming around. Are they passing gas? What is two? What is farting? (laughs) They're on cocaine. I'm just. They're on (laughs) cocaine, right? (laughs) Cocaine drugs, right? I'm a recovering addict. I might have to. It's candy, buddy. I know what that is. (laughs) Candy. I might have to bump someone because the alcohol wore off. (laughs) Yes. Or or the cocaine (laughs) wore off. (laughs) And, well, you know, you don't know. Sometimes people are very good. Like, I hired a girl to come to California with me on my Pussy Galore tour. Mm. Yeah. I thought she was f- absolutely fabulous. And she is. I really hope that she blossoms. But, uh, and I ha- saw no sign of substance abuse until three days into the tour, she vomits all over my investor's car and, and doesn't clean it up. And for four nights, she was blackout drunk at the show. Mm. And then, uh, or a- at our stay, we were being hosted. At the show, she was so drunk that she thought she could correct me in my headlining set. Ooh. Oh. Uh, okay, so speaking uh, of that. <laughs> don't disrespect. We're going to do this right quick, and then we're going to go because I want everybody to have time to perform yes. um, because it's only an hour show. So, dislikes. Uh, um, booking people that you book. Um, do people hit up your inbox too much? Um, no, they should ask. No. Always ask. No, I mean, I ask them. Look, I hate the one that inbox you. Uh, you know, you got any room in your show? Yeah, I got room. Okay, well, hit my manager. Come oh, on. Right, 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 Come right, on. Right. I'm <laughs> like, what? Every show we got Yo, but I've had it. I've had it. I, I know exactly I, what you're talking about. I got Go the ahead. next step for that is uh is someone who like say Facebook friend requests you, you you accept it because you have mutual friends, and then two seconds later you're pinged with a request for time. The best is like, hey, you got time on the show? And you, I've gotten to talk to my manager, and I was like, yeah, I got time. I can probably fit you in. And then the next question is, well, is it paid? <laughs> and I was like, you just begged me for time. Now you're begging me for money. No, no, like, no, yeah, yeah. no. This is now this is my dislike. Um, you have comedians that will go and say, I perform for you, but I need a deposit. So you give them a deposit, and they don't show up to the show. Oh, nah, who takes? Who gives deposits anyway? Like, nah. Unless it's like someone... I, I, I who, do. Who, who, I, I, like mean, to, I like to be 100% the local with scene my, is getting my comedians, a deposit. so I give them a deposit before they come to the show. Let me do a show for you. Hey, Tarek, I got... I'm sending in my veils right DC, now. <laughs> if I'm coming from D.C. to West Virginia, then I may ask for a deposit. Exactly. You know, so I, yeah, I, so I give, I give yeah. a deposit. Hey, hey, hey Tarek, I need a show, Tarek. <laughs> I need a show too, Tarek. Book me. 
<laughs> because I'm going to Fredericksburg, Virginia, and I'm going to Richmond, Virginia. Oh, okay. You know what? Right and I'm not, I've not gotten a deposit. At the and I don't, I, I'm not legally uh, 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 able to drive in Virginia. So I have to. <laughs> I don't think I am either, once I think about it. Is so it because you were tooting? I was You're not tooting. tooting. <laughs> I was not tooting. <laughs> Booga sugar. Oh, we, got, we got Amtrak. We got Amtrak. But so I'm going to have to put, t- put money out or like. Well, I won't tell you other ways to get a ride uh, down <laughs> okay. to Virginia. So that is so that is money that I would have to put out. So for in those instances, like I, but I have I have not reached out to the producers of either of those shows to say oh, how am I going to get down there. So it's it's up to me. Understandable. What I don't like is when somebody book you for a show. Oh man, push the flyer, push it, send it to your friends and everything. You look on their page. They shared it one time. Right. right. That's, what, that's what I don't like. If either. you don't get the beep out my face. That's right. You share that it one is time, the bookers, it's a producer's I'm responsibility. I agree. I'm already paid. I agree. Got you. So, um, like I said before, we're going to wrap this up. We're going to go to break right quick, and we're going to come back. Tariq Hagens is going to perform on the yeah. stage. Beautiful Tariq. Uh, and we'll be right back with more Thursday Night Tea. One shout out to um, Melinda Sutton Stokes, Michael Sharp, uh, Mark Minch. Uh, also, Anthony White Rivers, Gina Brown, Gwen Pridgen, R- Macuzzo, Ryan Scott. Thank you all for tuning in. I appreciate your views. Hello. We're going to be right back with more Thursday Night Tea with Anthony. <laughs> Oh my God, it's like I woke up and I was a comedian. And then it was like I had my own show. It's crazy. All right, y'all. Y'all right, all right, all right. Y'all ready to get ignorant, y'all? All right, we about to get ignorant. We about to get ignorant. First of all, man, I'm out here in D.C., and I'm so, I'm, I'm confused. Why don't y'all like Trump? Why don't y'all like Trump? Why don't y'all like Trump? Y'all didn't know what y'all was voting for. Y'all did not know he was a jack monkey. You didn't know? He is an idiot. He is a complete idiot. Everything about him is wrong. You, his history's wrong, but you voted for him. I mean, look, I'm going to put it like this. I don't like politicians. I don't like none of them. I voted for them because I don't like politicians. I knew what I was voting for. I said, you know what? It's time to shake up America. I said, we're going to vote for a, a jack monkey to, to shake up America. Yes. Yes, indeed. Oh, anyway, listen, talk about, talk about Trump anyway. We're going to stop talking about Trump because I know some people don't like Trump. But, you know, I, I understand that he, he got some issues. But where are my bald-headed ladies at? Where are my bald-headed ladies? Any bald-headed ladies? Bald-headed ladies? Okay, okay. Listen, listen. I am looking for a nice bald-headed side piece. Bald-headed side piece, yes. Yes, a bald-headed side piece. Let me tell you why. Because they keep it 100. Bald-headed women keep it 100. I ain't got to go behind you. I know you ain't going to leave no hair behind, no DNA. I am good with a bald-headed side piece. I love them. Also, ladies, let me tell you something. I'm so tired coming to your house and going to your bathroom. And when I go in it, it looks like a laundry room. It looks like a laundry room. You got your bras hanging up, your panties hanging up. You got panties in the sink. What are we doing? Ladies, ladies, what are we doing? I'm trying to wash my hands, use the bathroom, but I come in there and it looks like a laundry room. It scares me. 
Then, then you know, I'm nosy. I'm a nosy man. I'm very nosy. Then I go look at your medicine cabinet, and I see a whole bunch of stuff like vinegar, lime juice. Ladies, what are you doing with vinegar and lime juice in your medicine cabinet? Look, I know, I know you are not a virgin. You are not tight enough enough for me. You're not. I know you've been around a couple times. I have been too. We can keep it 100 with each other. I'm telling you. We can keep it 100. I'm telling you. I love it. I love it. Look, y'all, look. Summertime's coming up, ladies. Look, some of y'all feet do not need to be out. They do not need to be out. Cover them feet up. Cover them feet up. Just because you went to the get them the feet did don't mean they cute. They still ugly. That's my time, y'all. I love y'all. Tariq, no, up on stage, we're gonna talk, oh, right. talk about. So, um, your show is right here. Let's see your shows. Um, with his, uh, it, yep. There we go. Yes, so, it yes. is uh, Comedy's Most Wanted. Yes. That's your thing. So, what shows do you have coming up? I got a show coming. Actually, matter of fact, I left the show off because I don't have a flyer for it. I, okay. got, a, I got a show at the Alamo Theater. Okay. Uh, I'm doing. I'm opening. I'm opening up for the movie Blockers. Okay. With, Tell them where they can find you. Um, you can find me at one Winchester, uh, Winchester, Virginia, Alamo Movie Theater. Uh, Friday at nine o'clock, I'll be at Alamo Movie Theater doing an opening for Blockers the movie. I think that's the first time it's coming out. Blockers, if y'all familiar with it, uh, John Cena's in John Cena. Yeah. So yeah, I got that. Got that uh, coming up on uh on Friday. Saturday, I got a show, too, which I didn't put up either. But I'm not in it. I'm judging. I'm judging. Got a show Saturday. Okay. Um, that's going to be in Maryland. It's a cooking. It's a cooking and comedy show. I'm going to be judging the co comedians and the food. Love to eat. Love comedy. Okay. Tell them where they can find you on social media. Social media. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Instagram. I'm not on Twitter. Don't look me on Twitter because I ain't got time for that. Um, Facebook, Instagram. The Playboy, Terry Kiggins. That's it. Give him a round of applause, ladies Thank you so and gentlemen. Much, Thank you so much. Thank you Our so much. next fire comedian. Give it up for Elizabeth Corona. What's up? Hello, WLVS listener fans. Hello, my fellow producers. Hello, Michelle Sometimes. Uh, I uh, don't have any jokes, folks, um, but I am very... <laughs> I am very excited to be here. I feel like I'm kind of in a Star Trek hologram. Like, <laughs> you know, like I wanted to be a DJ or something and the, the lights went on. It's like, it's the Enterprise here and John Yeager is a uh, bearded Kirk, a bearded Captain Kirk. Captain Kirk got tired of overworking. He had a bunch of open mic crew hands coming in, lending, <laughs> lending help where it wasn't needed. And he just got tired, said I'll be in his room, in my room. Uh, drinking whiskey and growing my beard long. Uh, going into comedy. Fuck the center. Oh! oh. Uh. Next one. Uh, <clears throat> my comedy is rated G as in G. I wish I hadn't said that. <laughs> I tell you, I, if I had sexually assaulted people as many times as I've been sexually assaulted, I'd be running for office right now. <laughs> Uh, a men and a women, and and and, <laughs> and let's ratify let's ratify the Constitution and finally protect women for for once it, for once just once because it hasn't been done. Let's just protect women in the Constitution. Look, I mean it's the sexism is so deep. Even weed dealers are harassing their female pot plants, trying to keep them with flowers blooming barefoot in their kitchen, suffering under hot lights for daddy stash. DC stands for District of Cannabis. Like, can't we all just get a bong? I, I'm really... <laughs> I mean, come on now. Amen and a women. Let's just... I want to take you higher. Much higher. If I sound like I'm condescending, it's because I am higher. <laughs> you know who's coming out with her own weed? Monica Lewinsky. N yeah, 97% sativa. It will blow your mind. <laughs> What's the difference between a blimp and a BJ? What? One's a good year. One's really a good year. I wish you all a great year. Woo! Give it up for your host, Anthony Oaks. Woo! Give it up for Elizabeth. Elizabeth, here's your... Um, did I win? See. Did I win, you Anthony? Did. Here's your prize. <laughs> 
Tell us about your show. Oh, right on. Uh, let me see. This uh, this Friday, I'll be at Haywood Turnip Seed Junior's Attack of the Comics. Yay! 10.30 p.m. Shout out to Attack of the Comics. Love you, Woody Seed. 10.30 p.m., uh, Comedy Draft House. Then I go to the Wokity Woke Woke Show, April 13th, Friday at the Wonderland Ballroom. And I'm there with Fernando Madrigal, uh, Jordan Segway, and a bunch of other talented comedians. Then on April 19th, I'm in New York City at the West Side Comedy Club with Page Six TV's anchor, John Fugelsing. Woo, Page Six. Page Six, a men and a women. Six is the West African number of success. <laughs> What's um, the underbelly? Underbelly Blues. Yeah, what's that? That is my Amazon Prime movie. So they can go find it on Amazon? Yeah, I help produce it, and I cast all my stand-up comedy friends. Underbelly Blues. <laughs> underbelly Blues. I play blues. Madame X. <laughs> <laughs> Where can they find you on social media? Uh, ElizabethCroydon.com, C-R-O-Y, because I'm funny. D oh, there you go. Give it up for Elizabeth Croydon one more time. Next, we have a fire comedian. Welcome to the stage, Oral Henry. Uh, uh, how y'all doing? Hey, how y'all doing? Hey, um, I didn't know I was gonna do this. I just came, you know, you know, Skip and Anthony didn't tell me nothing. They just said, "I see you on Thursday." I'm like, all right. I mean, I got work clothes on, all this type of sh all right, um. Um, I'm going to tell you now before I get there. You catch me on Facebook. <laughs> I, 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 I don't like when people tell me what to do. It, it, feels, it feels odd. Like You catch me on Facebook at Oral Henry um, for the next two days. Cause I'm going to retire from Facebook because I, I, I can't stand it. I hate it. I, I hate it. It's too. You can't. That's the worst dating website ever. Uh, like You know what I mean? Like it, It's a bad dating. It ain't a good dating website no more. Like, you know like it's a bad dating website. It like because you can't find a nice woman no more. What what they got like five hundred and fifty five thousand pictures for the neck up. Like you don't know how they look no more. You just see the neck up. You don't know how to inbox them. Like hey, short hey, your neck look real sexy, Slim. Like you don't know how to really. I mean, your neck is like that. You got a dime neck. I'm gonna let you know right now. I don't know how to really talk to them, so I'm gonna just hang it up. I'm done with Facebook. Uh, you catch me on Instagram or Oral. Underscore Henry. Uh, yeah, I had to look at my... Yeah, yeah all right. <laughs> First of all, you got to understand I'm a function alcoholic, okay? <laughs> and most days I'm not functional. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, yeah, yeah. It's mixed. But look, no, no, for real, man. Uh, Facebook is one of the best places ever to find a nice whore. Uh, because... <laughs> no, because they got these... No, they, no, Michelle, look, you don't understand. They got groups. When women just post pictures of private part, and it's like the best thing ever. Like you don't have to, you don't have to get vibes on your phone and go to the dirty website. You could do it. No, like boob, like boobies, coochies, ass coochies. Yeah, yeah, you get all that. You don't have to worry about getting vibes. Cause you know when you go to these porn websites, man, you understand what I'm saying? You go to a porn website, you get vibes on your phone. You know what? I mean, I, I didn't mean you. Go See, no, I didn't mean you go to the website. You know what? I didn't mean that. And it came, it came out very, very wrong. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. All right, listen, man. Look, that's my time, man. Thank God so much, Oral Henry. Oral Henry, uh, talk about your shows. Uh, so we're going to. What's up there? I didn't. So we have your comedy roast. Oh, yeah, comedy roast for. um Come out. It's comedy. It's the 21st of April. We roasting Dare Skip and my man Dwayne. Come through. Everybody come up and talk about them. Please. All right. What else do you have? Uh, I, I see. I'm told. What is it, Saturday? Yeah. Saturday, I'm in Pittsburgh. <laughs> yeah. Saturday, I'm in Pittsburgh, Virginia. Um, doing our thing. Any comics? If you out that area, you want to come up? Come on up. I don't know what fly is that. What is that other fly? A kickball. Kickball game. Who the hell? Oh, oh. I, I, I'm gonna be there. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna be there. Yes, I'm be there. I'm be a pervert there. I'm be there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> come through. Be a pervert with me there. And then I'm in um Arizona. I'm in Arizona at Stir, um, Stir Crazy Comedy Club, April 29th, and I'm also at Toso Comedy Club on the 27th, Arizona. Okay, give it up for Oral Henry. <laughs> Next fire comedian to the stage is John Yeager. I like when uh, Oral passed me the mic, it was like the worst anchor leg in track history. <laughs> uh I'm in a, kind of an existential crossroads about what I exactly look like right now. 
Uh, I had to grow my hair long and a beard. Uh, I don't mean to drop names, guys, but I'm in a film. It's a student film. Uh, <laughs> it's called Dads of Anarchy. And I'm not playing one of the badasses. Uh, <laughs> so I grew this beard out. I look like if Zach Galifianakis ate Zach Galifianakis. <laughs> I look like Jesus with a thyroid condition. Aww. I look like a social studies teacher gone rogue. That's what I look like. So, uh, so I'm single. Uh, <laughs> it's interesting. Uh, comedy, you, uh, working with all these folks, uh, you travel all over. I did a show in uh, Fredericksburg, Virginia. No deposit. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> or, or payment either. Uh, well that's, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, and uh, I started telling this joke, and I always hate hecklers. Uh, sometimes they just, they just cut you to the bone, though. Uh, and I said, uh, you know how pets look like their owners? And this woman in the back yelled, you have a turtle? <laughs> and I was always taught to, like, kill people with kindness. Uh, so the only response that I had was true, and I was like, no, ma'am, I got a pug. I have a pug. So, yeah. And she's like, and she said, uh, what is that, an ugly turtle? Uh, it was great. Uh, but I'm excited to be here. I'll close up real quick. I uh, just got back together with my high school sweetheart. Thank you. Thank you. She's a sophomore now. Uh, I'm, I'm not going to run for everything. I'll walk for office or go upstairs. Anthony, come on back up, man. Uh, give it up for Anthony. Uh, Anthony uh, Yo, John Yeager, French Quarter Brasserie. French Quarter Brasserie. Every Saturday, this Saturday is the Drunk Show. Uh, then we got uh, the DC Comedy Festival coming through the 10th through the 14th. Uh, I've got the 13th at Beer Baron with Anthony DeVito from Comedy Central. The 14th at Desperados with Greg Stone from the Rad Dude Cast. And they're doing a live Rad Dude Cast podcast at Desperados uh, Bar and Grill, where I have every Tuesday show that's hot beef. Uh, check that out. And then the 22nd, I got a show at Ivy City Smokehouse. Uh, uh, it's a benefit for leveling the playing field. All right. Duh. John <laughs> Yeager. Give it up for John Yeager. <laughs> right, we're running out of time. time. So our final comedian is Derek Skip. I don't know what the fuck. Ooh. God. Ding me. I don't know what to say up here. Hey, don't, don't be doing me like that. The first word. I knew it was gonna be a bad day. I didn't. I knew it was gonna be. A, when I woke up, I had gas. Like you know, you all, you know it's gonna be a bad day when you got gas. Like ah, this office just ain't gonna be the same when I leave this evening. You ever just walk around and the gas follow you everywhere you go? You try to be as quiet and keep your cheeks as tight as you need to keep them. Poop, 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 poop. <laughs> it sounds like a game show host up in there, don't it? Brushed my teeth this morning and realized I was fat. Oh, yep. You fat? Yeah. I did this move. I did, like, you know, you brush your teeth and you did. My breast started shaking. I was like, you know, oh. it's time for a change. It's time, it's time for a change. It was like my clothes was too tight. You ever wear some too tight pants and take them off? You got that belt tattoo right here. <laughs> you ever tie your shoe and get dizzy? Yep. I'm fat. You with me? Yes. Just tie your shoe and run out of breath at the same time? Indeed. It was me. And and that's my time. Bring on Anthony back so, on up here. So where can we find you? Uh, your the show. The 21st, uh, my birthday show. Uh, next week, I'm doing a, a, a show for, uh, I can't think of his name right now, but it's going to be in Woodbridge <laughs> at uh, Babylon. And, and then I'm going to be in PA Saturday. Yo, check out, where can they find you on social media? Uh, Derek Skip underscore, I mean, Derek underscore Skip on Instagram and Derek Skip on Facebook. Okay, and John Yeager, where can they find you? Because you didn't say. Uh, too soon, T-O-O-S-O-N underscore, huh? At a too bar. Too soon, huh? too soon, huh? Yo, thank you for tuning in for Thursday Night Tea. Spotlight over the city is next. It's an amazing show. Tune in. Thank you for tuning in for Thursday Night Tea with Anthony. Shoot. Listen, vision, 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 list